Okay. So, with uh, to to summarize, uh, Deleuze Guattari is uh, is uh, the prevalence of immanence uh, opposed to transcendence, of vitalism as opposed to structures. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, uh, see what we have. Uh, it's also a pragmatics. In other words, no interpretation but experimentation, and that's very important. You're not looking for the meaning of a situation, but you're looking for ways to unlock a situation. Right? So, schizoanalysis uh, is not a cure, it's simply uh, some sort of a diagrammatization of what happens. In other words, you follow a line, and you try to see if the line is blocked somewhere, and you try to, to create another assemblage to create another multiplicity so that the, the problem is not uh, understood but it is solved by li leaving it behind. Mm -hmm. right. So there is an apology of course in Deleuze and Guattari of uh, the line of flight. They talk about uh, George Jackson and say I'm flying away but with a gun in hand. Mm -hmm. right. So to fly away is not a, a cowardness Situation, there are situations that, are, that, that don't, are not going to do very good for you, so you might as well leave them behind and confront them. And that's why they are very opposed to psychoanalysis. Right? Uh, psychoanalysis says, okay, you have a problem, let's come you know, every, twice a week or three times a week and talk about it, and we're going to, you know, in 10 years from now, we're going to solve it, mainly. Right? And for some people it works, for some people it doesn't work. But for Deleuze Guattari, it doesn't work. The problem is not to solve things, but to constantly uh, change the composition, the degrees, uh, and reach the threshold where the problem will disappear. It doesn't maybe disappear forever, but you might, you know, end block a situation and you do something else. And while you do something else, you become someone else. Because you never something to the exclusion of, 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 of something else. Yeah. Yes? Okay. So they don't so, believe in history? That's just what I want. Pardon? They don't believe in history? No. Believe in history. no. It's not that they don't believe in, yeah. but it's not their purpose. Yeah, okay. Their purpose is, uh, or they put, rather than believe in another kind of history, which is yeah. the, uh, the, what uh, Nietzsche would call the untimely. Mm -hmm. uh, in as much as history could be untimely, then they, his, they, they, they have the history. <laughs> but the idea that when you experiment with various uh, lines, you know, or follow, you know, follow the various composition, creating assemblages. Uh, desire is always, or, or always creative, creating new assemblages. But some assemblages are, are, are reactive and block and, and turn into paranoia. Other assemblages, you know, you don't have to go from one to the next, but constantly, like the, the trees in the Arctic, you can have, you can grow some roots that are going to, you know, eventually go up or down, whatever. You know, nothing is ever set in advance. It's a total fluidity, without any judgment. That's why the nose is against any judgment. You're not made to judge. That's what I said at the beginning with Spinoza. Uh, you are judged by the kind of light that you give to yourself. If you spend, spend your life controlling, you know, then that's your life. And if you spend your life trying to achieve preeminence or, the, or you know, compete with the others, that's your life. You, you deserve it because you could have experimented with your life and found a solution. You, see? you can always open up something. There's always a, uh, you can always get out of a situation if you make the situation complex enough. But the worst that can happen is that you say, either you love me or I throw myself through the window. Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a hard, a hard, a hard, uh, a, binary, a binary situation, right? Either or. Either or is a neurotic situation. Either you do this or, or, or I kill myself. Well, you know, that doesn't give much choice, right? So I said, well, maybe you open the window. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah, this, you have to find ways of letting air get a little bit so that uh, uh, there, there won't be any, any temptation to harden up all the lines to uh, just a confrontation. The confrontation, that's why they they they're different from, from Baudrillard. So Baudrillard wants to, uh, to, to simplify a situation and bring it to the point that, uh, to the point of a duel. Right? There's never any duel in, in Deleuze and Guattari. That's why there is, you know, something exclusive with each other. Uh, but they don't belong to the same 
regime of signs or to the same, same economy. So it's the ultimatum, really? Giving an ultimatum in some ways? No, for Baudrillard, yeah. it's the idea, like, okay, you, you first, you push someone in a position of power and you say, okay, from now on, I challenge you to go further. Right. You see? Right. So you will create a, 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 a position of power, but in order to challenge it, <coughs> but you need for this to, for, for someone to have power somewhere. You see? But it's, not, it's power that you give someone and you challenge them. But the challenge is, is the important thing. Not for Deleuze et Guattari. Deleuze et Guattari don't want, don't want things to get to the point where you could be challenged for something. Because the challenge would harden up the situations. It's me or you, it's me against you. And they will always try to find a, an escape, who lead lines of escapes. Also, the great, uh, the great uh, difference is that. Uh, for Deleuze, Guattier, as opposed also to Foucault, uh, power doesn't come from above, so uh, power is not something that, that has to be identified, right? In other words, uh, society, uh, they, they don't talk about uh, the state, but they talk about society. And society is not something close, closed, right? Baudrillard wants to close things, so that pushing not in a situation where uh, you, you have to choose between the two, but where the stakes would be clear, right? I mean, it's like 9-11, the stakes are clear, people come in, they, they hijack the, jet, the planes, and they turn it against the enemy. But it is a situation, a total challenge, right? And that's the kind of situation that Baudrillard would bring, try and bring to. And that's what he tried to, to bring to Foucault, saying, okay, you said that that, that is, is the power, but in fact, you exterminated the possibility of any power because it's too fluid to be called power anymore. So why do you hang on trying to define it in terms of power? And he was right, okay, I won't anticipate that, he was right in the sense that Foucault still maintained, you know, uh, the, the possibility of a power that go to metamorphosis that still exists somewhere, micropolitics, micropowers. Even if you go to micropowers, you still maintain the, uh, the, the model of uh, the state somewhere, right? That's, uh, that's uh, what uh, Deleuze uh, even himself uh, um, objected to Foucault when he sent him a letter, which unfortunately, uh, uh, he, he sent him a memo, a 16-page memo that was published, uh, that was sent to, to Foucault and was published afterwards, where he said, I don't know why you maintain the idea of power. Uh, it was saying more or less at the same time as uh, as Baudrillard was questioning uh, Foucault on the same on the same uh, topic on the same uh, uh, concept. Uh, Deleuze, for Deleuze, philosophy has to do with concept, right? But the concept has to be operative, and they thought that maintaining the the concept of power in a position where power couldn't be identified anymore was a mis was was not was not a, a good concept to be to be used, right? So there, in spite of all the opposition, Baudrillard and Deleuze had the same opinion of, of power, right? So that, that was a, one of the things I wanted to bring out, that, that in 1976, 77, when Baudrillard was challenging Foucault, in fact, on one hand, Deleuze was criticizing Foucault on, on the same account, and then on the other hand, as we, Realized later, recently, when the when the the lectures of Foucault at the Collège de France uh, were published, and they only published in French, that uh, Foucault himself was abandoning the notion of power for the, the notion of biopower. Right? In other words, and we don't exactly know how far he would have gone with it, because in uh, biopower. Mm -hmm. uh, what really is the concept? Is it bio or is it power? Right? In other words, the notion of power was, was being questioned by the very definition of, uh, of uh, what uh, bio is. You know, and, and there is a, well, a, it's still a, an element that is being debated, but I'll come back to that later. I wanted to finish a bit with, uh, with uh, Deleuze. So, uh, pragmatic, uh, imminent, assemblage, uh, vitalism, uh, you know, so pragmatic is, is to connect to the outside when the, when the, when Deleuze was, in the last part of his life, Deleuze wrote a lot of books about art, 
uh, uh, cinema, uh, painting, etc., etc. But he was he was attempting a bit to do what I was telling you about uh, Paolo Cello yesterday, how to be a philosopher artist. That's mm -hmm. an idea of uh, Nietzsche, right? How to uh, uh, and and Deleuze answered, well, uh, I want to get out of philosophy. That's why Deleuze was a real philosopher, right? The philosopher I didn't explain, explain. So let me explain now. Deleuze had a long uh, uh, career as a as an academic philosopher. Right? He went through Hume uh, and then studied pragmatism. He went through Spinoza and uh, and uh, and uh, brought out to the the element that he will find later in, uh, in Nietzsche, uh, he, he, he wrote on Kant, etc. Along the way, what he did to escape academicism is that uh, he was trying to bring out a system uh, that existed within each of the different philosophers, but also rewrite it in his own, in his, according to his own criteria. So that, as he said, uh, kind of in a strange formulation, but he made, he, he, he made a, a child to uh, the history of philosophy from the back, he said. Right? Okay. In other words, he, he, uh, he, he made his own version of each of the philosophers was monstrous. It was a version that the, these various philosophers wouldn't have accepted. But he didn't do that in order to... to, uh, to, uh, <coughs> to uh, uh, disfigure them but only because he works his own way through them. It's only through them that he could learn something. He learned something about pragmatics by you know, deconstructing, quote-unquote, uh, Jung. He learned something about, uh, about uh, flaws by, uh, by cutting S S Spinoza from his uh, hierarchical model, in that word, by getting away from God. As he said in a great lecture on, uh, on Spinoza, which is not published in English, unfortunately, but you could probably find it on the internet. Uh, he said, well, now I went along with, uh, with Spinoza up to a point where I said, look, you know, you need God to make everything, to, to, to preserve the possibility of the flows, but I follow you until then, then no, no, sorry, I, I'm not going to go any further. You know, I, I leave you there, I don't have to follow you and, and maintain the presence of a God to justify the system. I like your system, but not God. Right? So he gave himself the possibility of rereading uh, philosophy, uh, philosophy and doing the, the job of a, of, a, his, of a historian philosophy, because that's what philosophers usually are. Right? They are those who uh, basically comment upon philosophy the same way uh, uh, someone who writes about literature is you know, recapitulating the various uh, works that, uh, that were produced along the way. So he kind of brought, he, he managed to find his way against, inside the history of philosophy, but he was looking for an outside that the philosophy didn't offer him. And May 68 and Guattari allowed him the possibility of moving out of the history of philosophy and doing something which would be in his own terms. Right? And that's, that's basically what entire deep person thousand plateaus are. You know? Trying to not to, to try to get rid of the scaffolding of the history of philosophy and try to uh, actively uh, produce a, a philosophy that would be singular, right? And that's basically what what he, what he did. And its philosophy would follow the criteria that he uh, all the all the concept that he, he had invented along the way. But as Deleuze says, I, I I got out of philosophy. Uh, to be to to uh, to deal with art, but he said I, I did it as a philosopher, right? You can only go out, but you don't have to. You don't have to to reject everything that you are. No, you mobilize everything that you, that you learned along the way in order to uh, to make art richer, right? Or to make cinema richer, right? You don't stop being a philosopher because you talk about art, but it is because you are a philosopher that you learn your way out of, of, of philosophy as a philosopher. You don't deny anything. You just mobilize all your knowledge uh, and uh, all your concept in order to apprehend what you deal with in some sort of a, a creative way. Right? So basically that, that's, that would define more or less the, the point of view that Deleuze Guattari uh, 
the following. And if you read Antiodipus, the first, uh, there's four parts in Antiodipus. The first part is supposed to be the one you, anyone can read, which is the various uh, synthesis of the unconscious. In other words, what are the, alter the various alternatives to the Aristotelian model? Because the Aristotelian model is, uh, you, it's either one thing, one thing is either, either a, a is A or, or sorry. If you are A, then you can be non-A. You can be one thing and be something else at the same time. You have to choose. Right? And they, the, the, the unconscious, according to Deleuze Guattari, is not Aristotelian, but the unconscious put together things that don't go together. But that's exactly what they call an assemblage. The, the model they take that they, they took from, uh, from uh, Proust is the model of the orchid and, uh, and the wasp. Have you read that? What is it? You mean what is the what is the wasp and the bee? I mean, what is the wasp and the orchid? Yeah, what kind of assemblage do they make? Well, they were. I thought, my understanding was that they um, they did not evolve together; they evolved separately. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So there is a famous scene in Proust uh, of the Baron Charlus. The Baron de Charlus is homosexual, but he he denies that he is. And waiting for, for, for someone in the court of uh, one of the Saint Germain uh, hotels, he suddenly realized that, uh, that, that someone you know, that he sees coming towards a, a young man with a kind of pouch and all that, right? Uh, is the object, no, no. The, the young man that's coming, he is suddenly discovers the Baron Charlus, who is the way he is, you know, older, with a pouch and that, but exactly the kind of object of desire of that young man, right? So there's some sort of dance between them, and at that time, uh, Proust gives a parallel description of a, of a wasp and, and the orchid. Right? Each of them belong to different realm, but somehow, while being each, each heterogeneous to the other, right, a kind of dance can occur so that, uh, so that things that belong to different realm could somewhat connect. And the, in other words, the, the wasps go from one flower to the other, right? And the flowers like give, give out a scent and, and, and the colors, etc., to attract the wasp. But the purpose of, the, of it all for nature is to, uh, to, to make a birth possible through uh, the most unlikely way. You know, because the wasp has no, uh, has no connection with, uh, there's no biological connection to the wasp, to, to, the, to the orchid, right? So that's the idea of an assemblage. An assemblage doesn't have to be made of, uh, of elements that are of the same kind, but it is an encounter. It is an encounter with different lines, the line of the, of the wasp in the air, the, 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 the relation of the orchid to other flowers around it, or etc. Each of them is specific, is singular, but some sort of encounters can be made between different species or different, different uh, uh, you know, different realms, and through this connection, an assemblage is made, which is more or less uh, uh, transitory, right? And that's exactly what an assemblage is. is. Or we could call it a collage, you know? In French, it, 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 uh, and collage is also a way of, uh, of defining uh, some sort of liaison, you know, of uh, people who don't really go well together, right? It's a collage, right? Okay, so it means that some sort of communication is established in the difference in, in the different singularities. None of them loses its singularity, but when they are made in, in contact, then something happens so that uh, the the singularity of each is affected by by the proximity of the other.